and welcome to day nine of the Sydney Film Festival podcast. It's very exciting. We've got Jess standing by on the red carpet. Hey, Jess. We'll talk to her a little bit later. She's going to be there when the stars are walking up. It's going to be wonderful. Earlier today, Rachel had a chat behind with some of the brains behind Big River Man. Let's see how she went. Well, sometimes, uh, you know, you get to interview people that you are honestly interested in and want to pick their brains. This is such an occasion. I'm speaking to the big river man, Martin Strell, and his son and right-hand man, Borat. Um, welcome to Australia, first of all. I have to ask, first off, Martin, have you returned from the fourth dimension? This is my place, my life, and my story too. That's not competition, that's this fighting between nature and me in the most dangerous river in the world. For me, mm. maybe for you too. And uh, how to spend so long time in this dangerous water, 10 to 12 hours a day, because every day was a lucky day for me. And I think I found connection between animals and me. Now, obviously, you, you two are very close. You share a very trusting relationship. But I was wondering, Borat, for you, is this a case of you can't pick your family? Because sometimes do you want to punch your father? Like, it must have been frustrating. He's swimming off in the middle of the night. He's going against the doctor's orders that are saying you're going to have a heart attack if you keep swimming, and he just gets out and keeps swimming. You know, you've put all of this time and effort in. Do you get so frustrated? Uh, yeah, it's difficult. Sometimes it was really frustrating, uh, but I decided even at home before we left that this is what he wanted to do. And if it ends up being, you know, a bad story, it was up to him. We, we did our best. We were trying to help him, to protect him, to advise him as best as we can, you know, but he is an eccentric person and he would do what he wants to do. Uh, so at that time, he decided to do, let's say, swim at night, going against doctor's orders and stuff like that. And, you know, we told him, you know what you're doing mm -hmm. and it's up to you. We will help you. We are the team. We will support you. But it's up to you. So I accepted this as part of his behavior and decision. It wasn't easy, but that was o the only way we could move on. Martin, do you feel invincible in some ways because you've swum the Yangtze and which is one of the most polluted rivers in the world and you know you're swimming past dead bodies and you know a lesser man may have jumped in there you know gotten a disease and died you know you're swimming in the Amazon there are piranhas and crocodiles and all sorts of things you're drinking whiskey as you swim you know and and you you get to the end and you're fine do you, do you feel like nothing can stop you? I'm maybe I'm a very special person. Mm. I need time for my swimming before start. And if I say yes, nobody can stop me. That's my project, mm. my idea, my mind. Here stay, Martin. Let's go. Mm. And uh, that's me. Something I wanted to ask you in the film was what were you doing when you had the jumper, cables. the jumper cables on your head? What was all that about? Borut can explain this a little more. My head, it was empty. Maybe what it's is total, it? What? Totally empty. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the truth, the reality, what mm. happened that we had these batteries to charge all of our devices mm. and, you know, computers and all that stuff. Because when you're on the boat, you need to have different energy sources. Mm. And uh, we were preparing something, you know, to set up some charging. And Martin was looking at us as maybe I can get some energy from that. Because I need energy, you know, and not all the food and drinks can supply that. <laughs> that <laughs> time, yeah, and he grabbed it and says, look, we need to get this on the camera. If yeah. you're doing that. So that's <laughs> how it happened. So now are you finished with Big River Swimming? I will swim because I like to swim. I like rivers, seas, oceans, lakes, and I would like to raise awareness for clean water everywhere in the world, uh, because very clean water, drinking water especially, be very important for the future generations. And about this, I will swim more and more, maybe not two or three months, mm. maybe two or three days, but I will swim. And he doesn't know how to fail, how to give up. 
if if something is so important and you know such swims are important to his life and I see there are only two ways or he would complete it or die. All right, now we've got Jess on the red carpet talking to the stars and brains behind face. You two have worked together on many films. Uh, Lee's been in every single one of your films so far. What is it uh, about working with each other that you know that makes you want to keep making films together? I love this uh, actor. He's wonderful. <laughs> I I feel also it's a it's a very fortunate for me to be able to find an actor and to have my camera on the same actor for a long period of time, seeing the changes on the actor. That is also another way that I feel it's fortunate for me. How did it uh, How did it feel to be commissioned by the Louvre? You know, one of the most amazing galleries in the in the world. Because the Louvre is a very old building, it's a very old museum, and to be to have the old and the new be able to combine together, and I feel that very fortunate. They're able to ask me to uh, to do to create this film. And from one red carpet to another, presented for you in Technicolor, the red carpet for the September issue. Day nine, wrapped up here at the Sydney Film Festival. See you tomorrow.